So this is this is where we're heading on the Falcon. I like it. I do too. I mean, I like it well enough that my wife is actually the sales rep in the United States. So full disclosure on this, this is something that we sell, my wife sells uh, out of the house here. Sounds like a yeah, song. homemade. <laughs> <laughs> you have slaved Brew away on this for hours. <laughs> Put it on the stove for like an hour and a half. <laughs> like especially a the engravings from Made in Australia. That takes the longest. <laughs> it's the icing. It's the icing. Yeah. It takes the longest to do. Um, <laughs> but what I wanted to talk about before we get into the tasty bits here that are going to be going on the 64 hardtop is the fact of why I like this stuff. Now there's a lot of stuff out there. Yes. I mean, there's a ton of different systems out there. You've got the double A arm with a strut in the middle of it going down to the lower control arm systems. We've talked about that. Mm -hmm. If you want to go out and take a look at the video, it's at the uh, description below me here. It's also available down in the description. So in the lower third, there's text you can copy out, but you can also get a direct link to it down in the description. This is my favorite of two. <laughs> There's the, there's the stock stuff, which mm -hmm. I like Open Tracker for stock, yes. but if we're going to go for a full modified thing, I would probably go with Streeter Track mm -hmm. if you want to go with that double ARM yep. system, if that's good for you. You like the stock styling of suspension. And you want to use your stock brakes. Yes. That's a good, uh, that's a good solution. Yep. And I think power steering box as well, all the power works on that. Yeah, I mean, you can use all the same stock components like you can on this, and that's what I was going to go over with this one, is you can run stock components. You can run your stock steering with this system. Um, just like you can with the street or track stuff okay. and the stock stuff from open track or racing those are my three picks though yeah i really like what street or tracks doing with some of their stuff but this one hit all my buttons because of the, the, the studying i did on what this is capable of this is basically like the 04 gto front suspension okay same basic principle as that the thing i like about the aussies that I don't like about the Aussies, I wouldn't want to live there because of the Royal Transit Authority. <laughs> for for an, um, a free people, they are quite like oh, man. regulated. The RTA in Australia, <laughs> you cannot have welded components on your suspension. Mm -hmm. If it, We're, you know, I don't. They don't like it. Yeah, for Mustang their, twos are right out. You cannot yep. put a Mustang two on the road in Australia. For their environment, I can kind of understand that because welding leads to cracking, but still uh, welded components are easy. It's easy to do. I mean, there's a couple of companies out there doing something very similar to this that use a welded spindle. I still prefer this. This is a yeah. cast spindle. The Aussies went to a tremendous amount of trouble on this, well, I should say hub assembly because mm -hmm. this is basically, yeah. a, they call it a steering knuckle. Yeah, it's a knuckle. It's a knuckle with a hub on it. The knuckle has taken all the problems inherent in the stock mm -hmm. spindle assembly and the designers at RRS just took it right out. Yep. It's all gone now because it has the correct Ackerman angles, it has all the stuff it needs to be a better operating knuckle than the stock spindle. And they went to a hub assembly. Now why, why would they go to a hub? For me, that's replaceability. And also just ease of maintenance. Uh, packing bearings is not a hard task, but it is a messy task. And, and getting the bearing set correct. Yes, that's another thing. Uh, for like racing applications especially, to be able to just replace a hub on the fly is very, very nice. Exactly. So with this, you can replace that hub on the fly. Um, the nice thing about it too is, like I said, you don't have to worry about it. are the bearings set correctly. Yeah, no, it's done. Because you can have a problem with the bearings not being set correctly, and it's going to affect the way the car handles going down the road. With a hub assembly, you don't have that problem. All right, so... We know the hub's a better system from some performance aspects. There are people who are going to argue and say yeah. spindles are better, blah, blah, blah. I mean, I still like And it's probably them. going to be the people who sell things. I hate packing bearings. I do enjoy packing bearings. It's something wrong. Messy. <laughs> you got a problem. Um, but there are going to be people that will tell you that a spindle is probably a better idea yep. because it'll allow you to use your stock brakes. Yep. Now, with this system, that is one of the caveats about it that's kind of a problem for a lot of guys out there that buy these mm -hmm. systems. Yeah. Now this caliper was used on the American 04 to uh, I believe 09 or 08 GTO. Okay. It's also used on the Monaro mm, in Australia. Fancy. It's the same thing basically, yeah. it's not any different. This is a rotor that's available over the counter. So if you have to go down to the parts store, yeah. the nice thing is you can go down to the parts store and say, hey. I got I need, brakes for a GTO. Yep, I got brakes for an 04 GTO. I'll hand you this caliper across the counter and you're good to go. Same thing with the rotors. You go down and tell them what the rotor is and you can get that rotor yeah. over the counter. Nice setup for that. I like components that are supposed to be together. Yes. Um, if the Aussies designed this to have this caliper 
and this rotor or the other systems they have, because this is actually a phase two system. The other brake systems they have is a phase one, I believe through a phase six or phase five. Hmm. So. I'd have to ask my wife about that because I'm not <laughs> double sure because it's been a while for me. <laughs> um, but they, they have all the way up to a phase four, phase five system with uh, six piston calipers, uh, the yep. separated hat rotor system for going out road racing. Yeah. So it's really good stuff. But all this stuff up to a point, I believe phase three is the last place that you can get an over-the-counter over caliper. Works, yeah. But then you're starting to talk about racing stuff. You don't want to be using over-the-counter yeah. parts to you're be, be with. Be, <laughs> even if it's doing Brembo, you can't go down yeah. to the <laughs> store and get Brembos. You're going to AutoZone to get brake pads to go around the racetrack. Yeah. <laughs> There's something going on. You can put a Hawk pad yeah. on it. You're not going to get Hawks down into the AutoZone. No. Um, so I'm going to move on from the brakes and all that and talk about this. This is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. That looks bad. <laughs> um, but it is really cool. Yeah. This is a completely height adjustable system. Yep. Um, you can go in and you have a really cool adjustment for your camber because they got it set up very tight on tolerances. So you're probably on most systems, that's going to be your camber setting. There's a bolt that goes in here, which is somewhere in our stuff <laughs> <laughs> from the move. And that sets it. In other words, you tighten these two bolts down, you do this, after you get your camber set and you're good to go. The nice thing about it is you could actually, if you have uh, like a quick trick type of yep. alignment system, Easy and you're going to go on. to the track. Easy to do on track. Yeah, you can take this to the track and you can it's even say, okay, I need to turn this in or out yep. X no, number of turns like from where it sits. having to shim the upper control arm, none of that None nonsense. of that stuff like you do on the early Mustangs. This completely eliminates any of that. Yep. Um, full ride height adjustability, you have adjustability on the actual stack here mm -hmm. in the center. From here, this can come up and down. Say you're having maybe a little bit of an interference with maybe sway bar or something down here on this bottom pad assembly, you can actually take this and adjust thread this up a little up. bit, yep. thread it up a little bit to get that out of the way. Then you have ride height adjustability here. You also have different springs for small and big block. Mm -hmm. Uh, it has a really cool uh, rotating assembly up here. All this is ball bearing yeah, run. I was going to say, it looks like a really nice trunnion bearing right it's there. It's got a really good trunnion bearing on it. The, the cone and all is really nice. Um, and this is one thing. This is just one piece here, all of this working together. The handling on these things, I can't even describe it. We're going to have to go out and drive the car after we get it done to talk about the handling. It flattens the car out. No, it's probably more than night and day. It is yeah, an incredible difference. Everybody that's bought these kits from us has told me, wow, it doesn't handle like a Mustang yeah. or it doesn't handle like a Torino or it doesn't handle like a Falcon anymore. It's more like a European performance yeah. car. I can imagine. Going just to, from stock to tubular on the 66 was... It made a um, big um, difference. Immense, yeah. immense difference. The thing I like about this over some of the tubular systems that are out there is the fact that this is all attached to the spindle. Yeah. All of your downward force is kept over the outermost the part. Ball joint, yep. Yeah, by the ball joint. So that's what you want. You want all your force. All the force is in line. None of it's trying to pull the shock tower out, which is what you get with a spring on the uppers. Right. If you have your spring on an upper, that's one of the big problems with those systems. We've gone over this before. Is it's actually trying to pull the car yeah. apart. Yeah. Um, so this eliminates that completely. It takes all the stress out of that shock tower and makes for a much better handling car because of that. All right, so I'm going to talk about what you use to mount this thing up because obviously you don't have an upper control arm to control everything. That goes into the top of the shock tower up here. This is basically your shock tower mm -hmm. would be here. Um, you can use stock lower control arms in this. This is a 60, well, 60 to 65 Falcon and 64 and 5 Mustang lower control arm. I was right. Yes. <laughs> you figured it out. Good boy. I know my stuff. You have been trained well. <laughs> um, so that's the stock lower control. Now they have a really cool, which I'm going to bring that in after this, because I don't want to confuse I anybody. Think I've with seen think, that one. Yeah, so. thinking that it's it's the the part that comes with this. It doesn't. Um, but that you can use the stock lower control arm with it. This is their strut rod assembly. I was going to say it looks a little bit beefier than stock. It is a lot beefier yeah. than stock. It's fully threaded. Mm -hmm. that will allow you to go for caster adjustments on this end of it. Uh, to enhance whatever you've got going on that you have in the base system already. So okay. if you wanted to go for more caster, you can throw more caster into the front end. This is the urethane unit. They have another one that is a spherical bushing, which I actually prefer mm -hmm. to the urethanes. Uh, we're going to use the urethanes on the Falcon. We're doing a street car. We're not doing a race car. Yeah. 
uh, and this rod is beefy enough to do that. This system here is, is a beautifully done piece. It is thick, it is heavier duty than the stock stuff, both at the back and at the front. This is actually pretty spindly on a stock one. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull all this out of the way and I'm gonna bring the lower control arm to the end that they sell separately so you can see that. So move this out of the way. I'll go get the control arm. All right, so this is the control arm I was talking about from the guys at RRS. This is a billet lower control arm, fully milled, uh, beautifully polished piece. It's one of those things when I look at this, I'm kind of like, I really wish this wasn't under the car because it's really cool looking. Uh, lightweight piece, stronger than what you have with a stamped control arm. They do also offer a little cheaper option of this that is plated much like what uh, the guys did back in the day. Once again, it is not welded because the Australian DOT will not allow welding, so it is riveted on. It's gonna be just as strong as a weld on that case because if it's gonna flex and crack, you'll break welds. You're gonna have a problem with that, so that plating won't be an issue. Um, you can use other control arms with this as well, but I love this piece. All right, so it's all back on the table. Yes. Now, like I said, this is a separate thing. Yeah, not needed, but definitely appreciated. Yes. It's really pretty. <laughs> it goes with everything else. Yeah. It's one of those kind of things where it's the nice pair of shoes with a beautiful suit. Yeah, may not purchase it right at first. You know, and that's the cool thing about the RRS stuff. We're gonna go on pros and cons now. Mm -hmm. One of the pros I think about the RRS that I really like is that it's, you could just do the strut and brake kit yep. and be done. Yep. You could do the rack and be done and then come back later and do the strut and brake kit. Piece, piece you piece can piece me again. Yeah. And that's kind of what we're going to do with the Falcon because we don't have all the things we need to do the five-speed conversion right now. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go ahead and install the strut and brake kit in the next couple of weeks. Okay. Uh, and then after that, we'll go in and do the rack and pinion. And then we'll also do a three-link rear suspension that they offer as well. Sweet. Still trying to figure out what I want to do about exhaust on that because no, no. I don't... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, dude. Driving that wagon to the lake the other day with the turn. Yeah. No, it's, it gets I have a little. I plugs in my Mustang. <laughs> yeah. All right, so back to pros and cons. I would say one of the pros on this thing is that it is as rugged as the day is long. Yeah, I was thinking that earlier. I've never seen a uh, shock with that thick of a rod. Believe it or not, in the though. American market. Yes, but the cool thing is, is that's a replaceable. You can get them here. Okay. Cool. So they're available in the U.S. market. Same thing, like I said before, with the calipers, rotors. Mm -hmm. uh, it uses a stock lower control arm. Okay. So everything that it uses pretty much is available in the United States. The only real proprietary piece is the actual strut assembly, mm -hmm. <clears throat> which this isn't a wear component. Yeah, that should never... Unless Let you... me say that. It, wear components are available. The hub assemblies, honestly, these, I think they're like a 150,000 mile wear component on them. I wouldn't be surprised. So... You know, you're not unless you do something really stupid, you're not going to have to replace it. Or road racing every weekend, high heat, high. Flow yes, exactly. Everything. If you're going out there and you're doing a phase five kit and you're running the high heat, you're probably going to have to redo these every once in a while. Yeah. Okay, I get that. Um, but I mean, as far as the handling and driving ability of these, we'll just have to give you guys a look at it later on down the road. But for right now, I'm just going to say I would say driving on the street, A plus plus. I've driven a couple of the systems. When you do everything, when you do the, the three-link rear suspension system, the rack and the strut, it's like driving a Porsche. Yeah. I I, no, because the Porsche is an axe murderer. <laughs> um, at least according to Jeremy Clarkson, he says it's an axe murderer. Good, 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 good not good. Not good, yeah. <laughs> um, so I would say a European performance car, it okay. has the same handling characteristics of that. It's very flat, very just amazing rails. handling. Yeah. Yes, it's on rails. Um, there are a couple of cons. Mm. Yeah. One of those being cost. It, yeah. It's one of those things where if you're going to go out and spend money, because I think that this system compares price-wise to a lot of the other systems out there. Mm -hmm. The only problem I see that this has compared to the other systems is that you can't use your original brakes. Mm -hmm. But like I said before, if I'm buying something that's assembly and they've tested it with these brakes and they're fully checked out for use in Australia. It's a bang and brake kit to begin it's with. It's a bang and brake kit. It, I mean, this will outperform any stock brake kit. Oh gosh, yeah, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You'll ever get. And it's it's a nice system. This is a PBR, well-tested caliper that's been in use, you know, for ages. Yeah. So the biggest problem in that I see is cost. Yeah, that, that's really the only downside I can see as well. Um, Fully may, bolt in. Maybe time to get the parts. If that if can be an issue, that can Australia. be, yeah, it has to come from Australia. Sometimes that can be a problem from a timing aspect. Yeah. That's but really 
but that's price that's, of, really that's the price of success. <laughs> it's a price of doing it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think that it's uh, it's a small caveat, but yes, I do agree that you know time to get this stuff can be a long delay sometimes. Now that's come down. Yeah. Um, the biggest problem they've had is because of the COVID issue. Mm -hmm. They've they've had longer delays than they had been having. Their shipping's gotten way better recently. Yeah, it's uh, they're down to I think about three weeks right now on ship out. Oh, that's get it within even. three weeks. Anyway, so that's it. So we're going to close this thing out and uh, just kind of mosey on for the week. I know we didn't do anything techie this week, but I wanted to kind of lay this out and talk about it, and then do the install on the parts to show you just how easy this stuff is to put in the car. It's actually harder to take the stuff out than it is to put the stuff in. This kit looks probably easier than the streeter track that we put in my 66, mostly because it's already assembled. It's basically yeah. done. Now, when you get it, it comes with these separated from here, but that's basically, we'll show that. Yeah. It's just putting those two pieces together, putting the bolts in there. Um, but it looks, shove it Finding in. the screw yeah. that goes here. Yeah, that part. <laughs> comes with the brake lines even. It comes with a nice set of uh, braided brake lines as well right. that match the blue for this. Mm. So that's just a nice piece. Yes. All right, so check out Patreon. Our Patreon account helps guys like Andrew come in here and be an editor. He's learning how to edit and become a functioning member of a crew. I thought you were about to say society. <laughs> we're not, I can't do we're all not, things. We're, we're not there for that babysitting. <laughs> That's not my job. So anyway, the kids that come in here, we do pay them a little bit of money every week so that they can feel like they're getting something out of doing this other than, you know, the potential for a job down the road. Uh, but there's a list that's been going up by me on one side or the other. Those are the guys who put their money where their mouth is and we appreciate them for coming on board and helping us addition to what we get from our normal income on the show. It really does help us to be able to pay the kids to uh, be able to come in here on Saturdays and work with us and to help Andrew make a living. Maybe not a living wage, but a little bit of money for booze or whatever. <laughs> also, subscribe to the channel because we're on our march to 100,000 subscribers. We have a Paul's wall with a little Paul's wall. We're like 92,000 subscribers at this point. So we're trying to get to the 100,000 mark only because I want the stupid plaque. Now, probably when we get there, YouTube will tell us we don't get plaques anymore. Get a PDF. I'll get a PDF file of a plaque that I can print out and put on the wall. That'll be fine. But we're on our march to 100,000, so help us out with that. Finally and all, folks, do me a favor. Be kind to each other, love each other, treat each other nice. You too. <laughs> you guys have a great week. We'll see you next time on Auto oh, Resto Pod. I don't like treating people nice. <laughs> I know, but that's the problem, bro. We're trying to, we're trying to, see, I'm trying to help you and Andrew become integrated into society. There's no integrating. <laughs> <laughs> Integration don't happen in this department. <laughs> Try so hard. <laughs> fail so, so long. spectacular. Fail so <laughs> <laughs> the fail so spectacular. Mm. It's great. Job. Bye. Bye. You said we were done. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>